Now there are two types of input and output pins on the ESP32, digital and analog. We'll start with digital pins because they're um, uh, really useful for basic stuff like reading the state of devices such as buttons, switches, or for controlling things like uh, relays, transistors, or even LEDs like this one. So think about a button for instance. It can either be pressed or not pressed. Same with an LED. It can be on or off. That's it. So if uh, in your sketch you'd like to know the state of a button, then yeah, uh, you'd connect it to a digital pin. Uh, set that pin as an input and um, when you press the button, you can read the pin's state. If it reads 3.3 volts, then you can basically tell that, yup, the button's pressed. Now let's flip it around. Vanu. What if you want to control the state of an LED, like turn it on or off programmatically? In that case, you connect the LED to one of the digital pins, configure that pin as an output, right? Because now we're trying to send a signal out. Uh, and then you just write a high or 3.3 volts value to that pin. And yeah, that makes the LED light up. Uh, so to begin with, uh, let me just show you how to wire up an LED to your ESP32 and um, control its state using code, like turn it on and off directly from your sketch. You'll need a few basic things to follow along, your ESP32 board, a breadboard, an LED, a 5mm LED is perfect, and you'll also need a resistor. The resistor is really important because it protects your LED from burning out. See, LEDs have like really low internal resistance and if too much current flows through them, they'll just uh, die. So that's where the resistor comes in. It's called a current limiting resistor. The one I've got here is 220 ohms, which works great. But if you don't have that exact value, no worries. You can go with something a bit higher, even up to 1 kilo ohm. But don't use anything smaller. Because uh, the smaller the resistor, the more current will flow through and yeah, your LED might burn out faster or get damaged. Alright, so uh, another little thing that's super helpful to have on hand is uh, a coin cell battery. And here's why. If you've never like messed around with an LED before, you might not know this. But LEDs in most cases come with two pins and uh, one pin is actually longer than the other. Now, that's not just random, it's there to indicate polarity. LEDs only work when connected in a particular direction. If you hook them up backwards, they just won't light up. So, the longer pin of the LED, that's called the anode, and that's the positive side. The shorter pin is called the cathode, and that's the negative side. So, basically, when you're wiring this up, you'll connect the long pin, the anode, to a positive output from the ESP32 like a digital pin and the short pin, the cathode, will go to the ground. But uh, if you ever forget which pin is which, the coin cell battery comes in really handy as a quick tester. Let me show you how to use it. You just take your coin cell battery, like one of those CR2032 uh, and hold the LED right across it. One pin goes to each side of the battery. And when you've got the polarity right, boom, the LED will light up. So here, I'm connecting the long pin of the LED to the side of the battery with the plus sign. That's the positive side. And yeah, it lights up nicely. Now let me flip it around. If I connect the LED the other way, with the short pin going to the positive side, you'll see it doesn't work. Nothing happens. So yeah, it's a quick and simple way to check if an LED is still working or to double check the polarity before plugging it into your ESP project. Alright, so before we jump into the code, uh, let's quickly go over a couple of things. Okay? Um, now, in order to send voltage to something uh, like say an LED, we're going to use two main functions. Uh, the first one is pin mode. This is what we use to set the mode of a pin basically to tell the ESP32 whether that pin is for input or output. It takes two parameters. The first one is uh, the pin number 
that's the pin we're going to use. In our case, it's pin 5. But honestly, you can go with any other digital pin you like. And the second parameter tells it what mode to use. Since we're sending voltage to the pin, we'll set it to output. With all caps, by the way. And uh, yeah, because we only need to set the pin mode once, we usually put this line inside the setup function. Once that's done, we don't really have to touch it again. Now, the second function we need is digital write. This one is used to actually send the voltage to that pin. It also takes two parameters, basically the pin number again and the value you want to write. If you set it to high, you'll get around 3.3 volts on that pin. And if you set it to low, it's going to drop to zero volts. Okay, so pretty easy so far, right? All right, let's go ahead and jump into the coding section. Uh, okay, so uh, the first thing you do when you want to use a digital pin is uh, set its mode. Remember, digital pins can either act as inputs or outputs. And you've got to tell the ESP32 which one you're using. In our case, uh, since we're connecting an LED and we want to control it, we need to set that pin as an output. To do that, we use this command called pin mode. And it takes two parameters. Uh, the first one is the pin number, uh, like which pin the LED is connected to. And in our case, it's connected to pin number 5. So here I'm going to type 5. And next I needed to tell in the same instructions a second parameter that this pin is going to act as an output. And yeah, don't forget the semicolon at the end. Alright, so now that the pin is set up as an output, let's jump into the loop part. Say you want the LED to blink. Like turn on for a second and then turn off for a second. Kind of like a heartbeat. To do that, we control the voltage on pin 5 using another command called digital write. Just like before, it also takes two parameters. First is the pin number, so 5. And second is the state we want to set it to. To turn it on, we use high, which basically sends 3.3 volts to the pin that lights up the LED. Now, we don't want the LED to just flicker and disappear instantly, right? So we add a small delay using delay semicolon and that'll keep the LED on for one second. Uh, after that, we want to turn it off. So again, use digital right and we'll pass low as the second parameter. Which brings the voltage back to zero volts. Then another delay 1000 to keep it off for a second. And since this is inside the loop, the whole thing just keeps repeating. On for a second, off for a second, over and over. That's basically it. Our first blinking LED sketch. So go ahead and connect your ESP32 to your computer with a USB cable and upload the sketch. You'll see the LED start blinking. One second on, one second off. Now let's say you want to tweak it a bit, like leave the LED on for a full second but off for just half a second. Uh, just change the delay value from 1000 to 500 in that second delay. Upload again. All right. And so now you can blink pattern, blink pattern change. changes. Pretty cool, huh? You can totally try out more patterns if you want. And as we know, there's already an LED on the ESP32 board that's connected to pin 2. So you could just replace the 5 with a 2 in the code and run the same patterns on that one too. And well, uh, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.